We see rising inflation. We see energy being used as a weapon. We see threats of trade wars and the return of confrontational geopolitics. Зараз є загроза обвалу того життя, до якого звикли люди в світі. Яким може бути життя у світі, якщо буде дозволено бити з танків по атомним станціям? Tragedies are outpacing life. Tyranny is outpacing democracy. Every democratic nation should rethink its dependencies on authoritarian regimes. Our world has never ever witnessed an energy crisis of this depth and of this complexity. Inflation, by all accounts, however you look at it, is way too high. This year is going to be a tough year. We will see the effects of monetary policy tightening, and this is generating a cost of living crisis. And it's not a short-term cost of living crisis, it's a long-term inequality crisis. We shouldn't be running our economies on poverty wages. 214 million workers around the globe, they work 40 hours a week, yet they are not able to even pay the bills. We understand the power and the change that can come from this room. We can move with agility and speed, and your speed is needed now. We need to build resilience and diversify. This is another way you can grow trade and grow the world. The commitment to limit global temperature rise to 1.5 degrees is nearly going up in smoke. We are headed to a 2.8 degree increase. And for many, it will mean a death sentence. It is now crystal clear that the future belongs solely to renewables. When you look at the distribution of the green scales around the world, so much needs to happen in the global south. We're not investing nearly enough, and it's no good for us to say we don't have any money because we're the only people who do have any. We need to mobilize more capital going to developing countries, and to do that, we need to de-risk those investments. No government has enough money to affect this transition as fast as we need it. In the end, it's going to be private sector investment. There is capital, but the pace needs to increase dramatically. We have to educate our shareholders to understand that we will be rewarding our leaders for behaviours that are not just about the bottom line. It's essential that non-financial targets and ambitions and goals actually get audited because trust is what is most needed at this point. We have responsibility, but also think about it, the privilege to be part of shaping a better world. We have a long way to go when it comes to meaningful participation in decision-making. Through collective responsibility, we have the capacity to turn the challenges into opportunities. Bringing the virtual and the physical worlds together, we will be able to solve more challenges. A world that is more integrated is a world where we are connected on the basis of our humanity and we recognize how much we depend on each other. It's easy at times to be discouraged when you see some of the setbacks, but the big wheel is turning in the right direction. I want to see real commitments. I want to see global leaders actually taking action. We don't have the time to postpone this.